Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the YouTube channel for The Life Size City. I am, as ever, Michael. Today, I want to show you an excerpt from the season one episode of The Life Size City from Tel Aviv. There is a lot of talk around the world, and it's growing day by day, about the importance of green spaces in our cities. I don't know if it's just me, but it seems to be that we're talking a lot less about the importance of our blue spaces, the water in our cities, the lakes, the harbors, the beaches, the rivers. And this is something that I think we need to be talking a lot more about. If the mentality of the developers here in Copenhagen and many other places in the world uh, is anything to go by, the blue space, yeah, that's just what you see when you look out at the water, that surface thing. You know, you can swim in it, you can float on it, and let's not worry about anything more than that. It should be regarded on an equal footing with our green spaces. And as ever with the Life Size City, I'm going to meet some people in Tel Aviv who are reacting to a lack of action from the city itself and combining their passionate hobby for diving with cleaning up the ocean floor. Let's do it. Let's go to Tel Aviv. There's an increasing focus on green spaces in our cities, but it's only recently that we're taking a long, hard look at the blue, the rivers and lakes, the harbors and seafronts of our cities. They've been integral to urban life for millennia, but we've also treated them as sewers and garbage dumps. But a pristine aquatic environment is a key element in any life-size city. Hello. Good morning. Morning. <laughs> you look like you're really ready to go. People need open spaces. Tel Aviv is an area where you have millions of people living very, very densely. Our real open space is the sea, the Mediterranean Sea. It should get more attention and conservation from now on. For many years, there was a construction materials dumping site just here at the north of the beach. Mm -hmm. And it's just piled up and was pushed into the sea. Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. In the mid-2000s, like 2003 and onwards, uh, there was a process of restoring this beach mm -hmm. and turning it into a public park. You can see the grass, you can see the promenade, and you can walk all like free from Tel Aviv to this beach, uh, and it's open. Cleaning the beach and transforming it into a park is a great idea, absolutely. But to Sarah, maintaining public access to blue spaces also means cleaning the sea itself. You have a group of volunteers here and you go out and dive. We want to remove hazards and remove garbage out of the water. We operate regularly. We don't just do one thing and then disappear. We already dived here four times, so people are getting to know and they're also attached to the beach. I just realized your crew is completely gone. Yeah, they're under the <laughs> I water. I think you got to get ready too, don't you? <laughs> yeah. All right. It's a little bit quicker when you're just snorkeling, so I'm going to get ready too. <laughs> So that is a lot of stuff we got there. Uh, what did you find? No, we found a fishing net. Oh yeah? These rings, lots and lots of pipes. There's a lot of construction materials. So that's what we found in the dives that we did here in the last year, which means they came from this pile that we were talking about before. Whatever we do in the beach is getting into the sea. Sometimes when we take garbage, we take some animals that were in the, uh, trapped in the garbage, mm -hmm. but we want to take them back to okay, pass into the water. So just, we never had an octopus rolling out of the garbage. 